The New Zealand Ready Mixed Concrete Association has over 46 members representing 185 plants and more than 1,200 concrete trucks. These members adhere to a testing and plant audit scheme which ensures quality concrete is delivered within the New Zealand standards anywhere in the country. So you want to be a concrete truck driver. You'll be part of a process that ensures this quality product is cared for from the time it leaves the concrete plant to the time it's been received by the customer. Your job covers many distinct areas which we'll talk about during this DVD. This includes safety and health, your truck, your role as a concrete truck driver, our environment and concrete appreciation. Over 13% of all work-related injuries can be attributed to the building and construction industry. Each year, they cost businesses and employees financially and physically. You have a responsibility within your work environment for the safety and health of you and of those around you. When you start with your company, you'll receive a personal kit, which will vary from plant to plant but will include both safety equipment and documentation. Personal protection should include hard hat, which should be worn where overhead hazards are present or where it's specifically a site requirement. Eye protection needs to be worn in the presence of cement dust or where concrete splashes may occur. High noise levels for even short periods of time can damage your hearing. Earmuffs or plugs should be worn wherever you're continually exposed to noise. The wearing of suitable day glow clothing will ensure that you and others are visible on a construction site or any high risk areas. Wear the provided protective equipment and clothing whenever necessary. Play your part in maintaining your personal safety and contributing to a safe site. You can achieve this through your personal conduct, by working safely and taking care in all work practices. Concrete is highly alkaline and is destructive to your skin. The process is known as chemical burning and these burns are usually more serious than acid burns. Alkali burns penetrate deeper and burn longer Use of an approved barrier cream and protective gloves, where necessary, is a must. Always remember the three-point rule of contact whenever climbing into or out of a vehicle. Maintain the three points of contact rule, whether two hands and one foot or two feet and one hand. This gives you maximum control of your body while still allowing for movement. Should any slip occur, you will be safe. Without it, even a simple slip could result in serious injury. It's important to use only recognized grab handles and steps, not just what is at hand. The three-point rule applies to any ladder or climbing situation. Make it a matter of habit. While much of the time you will be on the road or various work sites, you will be routinely in and out of the concrete batching plant all day. It will become your home base, and we all know how easy it is to relax around home. However, in this working environment, familiarity can lead to carelessness. Do not take the plant for granted. With so much activity going on at any one time, it presents numerous essentially overlooked hazards and situations 
and number one is slips, trips and falls. Slippery surfaces like slurry, ice and uneven surfaces, including steps, stairs and aggregate spills, are accidents waiting to happen. Maintain vigilance at all times. Be aware of conditions underfoot and adjust to them beforehand. Look and look again may sound simple, but the truth is it will save you from unnecessary injury or even worse. Do not run up or down stairs. Keep one hand free on the balustrade to stop a fall if you trip. The plant can be a very noisy place and noise can mask hazards with so many moving vehicles, concrete trucks, loaders, cement tankers and aggregate trucks. Part of being aware of your environment is paying attention to warning signs in place. They are there for a reason. Look for them and take a moment to think about your safety in relation to the messages. Good housekeeping is the basis of good safety. Take responsibility to either report or clean up any spillage. Become aware of and sweep away any loose debris. Conveyors and other moving machinery pose considerable risk to hands and fingers. Always respect handguards. Never try to reach past them, not even for a moment. All conveyors must be stopped and locked out before any maintenance or cleaning is commenced. There are strict isolation procedures that should be followed. These differ from plant to plant. Make yourself aware of them. Always check with the plant manager or supervisor. More accidents happen in the construction industry while handling materials than from any other cause. The most common types of injuries include strains, sprains, torn ligaments and muscles. When lifting, safe practice means you should check that the load is within your lifting capacity. If necessary, ask for help. Watch out for sharp edges and wear gloves when necessary. Read the Good Lifting Practices Guide. Solid footing, squatting position, straight back and no twisting of the body. In the concrete industry, the range of sites will be diverse from the domestic market through to heavy industrial. Treat every site the same, even if it is a familiar one. Observe. This is the most practical way to evaluate activity, identify hazards, and determine how to best approach a job. Some sites do have hazard identification. Be aware of these. Concrete is essentially a fluid, and so is constantly moving. When working on a hill, it's important to remember your truck's center of gravity shifts with the angle of the vehicle. Always consider this when manoeuvring onto a site. The best rule of thumb is to always have the front of the truck pointing downhill and never place the truck at right angles to the slope. When manoeuvring on site, select deep reduction. This will reduce unnecessary wear and tear on your truck. When negotiating steep hills, remember that your load is fluid and unnecessary gear changes on steep uphill situations may cause your truck to lurch and spill concrete. It may be appropriate to select a lower gear at the bottom of the hill. This can lessen embarrassing spillage and unnecessary cleanup costs. Also remember, when going down steep hills, be in the right gear to keep control of your vehicle. A 20-ton concrete truck can cause severe damage if not driven correctly. All accidents, incidents or near misses, whether or not they result in personal injury or property damage, must be reported to your manager or supervisor. This includes raising any observations you might have of health and safety risks on work sites. Such information is vital to the safety of you and your fellow workers. It is not the company's intention to place blame in the event of accidents, incidents or near misses. The purpose is to simply establish what happened, why it happened, and how to prevent any reoccurrence. This differs between companies. 
Familiarize yourself with your company's report procedures. A responsible and safe attitude can be summarized as carrying out instructions properly, asking for advice when in doubt, reporting any unsafe conditions, using the correct tools and equipment, keeping the workplace clean and tidy, not distracting others or fooling around, using only machinery that you have been trained to use, wearing or using your PPE and clothing, not starting machinery without all guards in place, reading the company's safe policy, Your vehicle is your office, your primary place of work. Respect it and look after it. Remember, you're in charge of a vehicle weighing more than 20 ton and worth a lot of money. Your vehicle is also a moving billboard for your company. Much of how the public view our industry is based on their experience of our vehicles on the road and the actions of our drivers. A clean vehicle driven safely and legally by courteous drivers is the way we want to be portrayed. Being the type of vehicle it is, there are many safety considerations to keep in mind. Collect your keys for your truck and when necessary, pick up an RT, ensuring it is charged and turned on. You should communicate with your batcher or dispatcher to ascertain your loading time and your place in the batch queue. Proceed to your vehicle and conduct your start of the day pre-drive checks. Check the oil and water in the truck's engine and the oil in the mixer unit. Top up if necessary. Walk around your vehicle checking wheel studs and tire condition and pressure. Check there are no objects between dual wheels. Check under your truck for oil, water and fuel leaks. Check that all the truck equipment is on board. Chute scraper, brush, broom, chute cover, etc. And make sure it's stored appropriately. After starting your vehicle, check the oil pressure, ammeter, vacuum, air and fuel gauges. Check the lights and indicators. The vehicle road user license mileage must be within the limit. Make sure that the certificate of fitness on the truck is current and you have your driver's license with you. Complete your logbook. Report any vehicle faults immediately to the plant manager or batcher dispatcher and fill out the appropriate reports and check sheets. Select an appropriate place to discharge any water that may be in the bowl. It's important that this action should not be carried out if your truck is on Delvo or similar for bowl cleaning. Could you please put 40 kilos of black oxide in the back of your truck please? Thank you. Pull forward to the designated area and wait to be called under the plant for loading. Ensure the bowl is in mix mode. Always ensure that the batcher is aware of water or any product in your mixer prior to loading. When reversing into the plant, ensure that you select the correct gear and check constantly in both mirrors throughout the procedure. Don't take it for granted that others are aware of you reversing. Once under the plant, ensure that the bowl is turning in the mixing direction and the correct speed. For dry mix batching plants, this is generally between 1500 and 2000 engine revs and the mixer unit in full speed approximately 17 revs per minute. Wear the necessary safety equipment and stand at a safe area. 
This is usually the time to fill your mixer water tank. When washing down your truck before departure, ensure no water is directed into the bowl. You may be required to discharge a sample of the mix before leaving the yard. Loading procedures vary from plant to plant. Always contact the batcher or dispatcher for the correct information if the plant is new to you. Every time you drive your vehicle, take a few moments to conduct a visual pre-drive check. We call this procedure the circle of safety. Walk clockwise around your truck, checking to see that it's safe to begin operation. Only after this is done, and you know the area around it is clear, should the vehicle be moved. Just 30 seconds could save needless vehicle damage, and quite possibly, a life. Operating the chute poses a variety of potential hazards, especially to the hands and head. So always think first and take care. Use a hand-over-hand -hand operation to tilt the chute down. Remember, it is a heavy weight and losing control can injure. Keep your hands free of possible pinch areas and where fitted, utilize the chute safety latch to prevent crushing. Always ensure that the chute is locked back into place so it can't swing out freely. If for any reason your latch is damaged or inoperable, immediately inform your supervisor. Your two chute extensions must always be anchored by strapping firmly with the vehicle bungee cords before driving. Where fitted, you should always wear your seat belt. Whether it's driving your truck or operating a loader, wherever there is a seat belt, you are expected to buckle up. On occasion, you will be required to clean out the inside of your vehicle's concrete bowl. There are specific confined space procedures for this task. Your plant manager or supervisor will take you through the correct procedure and training as required. Never enter a confined space without observing the correct procedures. Don't take shortcuts. Lock your cab and take the keys with you. Wear the correct safety gear. Never ever enter a confined space without informing someone. Planning for your day assists the batches, dispatchers and the company and ensures that you arrive at your destination in a timely fashion. There are things you can do at the end of the day to help this, including refueling your vehicle, topping up your water tank and making sure the truck is in a state of readiness for another day's work. The driver's role within the concrete experience is one of the most important, ensuring that the needs of the customer or his agents are met. In many cases, you are the face of the company and sometimes the only representative the customer will meet. Your appearance and behavior will be their impression of the company, which may lead to future work. The way we look to the customers and the public is important, that is, tidy and clean and what you wear, or how you wear your uniform should one be supplied. Clean and shaven, or moustaches and beards well groomed. Wear appropriate safety clothing. The way we behave is equally important, not only directly face to face, but also your driving etiquette. Remember, always be polite. 
Never argue, swear, or use bad language in front of customers or your fellow employees, and never on the RT. Assist the customer where you can. Drive safely, watch your speed and stopping distances, and avoid road rage at all costs. While docket information will vary from company to company, it should contain all the information you require and need to know to carry out your delivery. That is, who the customer is, who is receiving the concrete, for example the concrete placer or concrete pumping company, what type of concrete you are delivering and the volume. It may give you the information on what number truck you are driving to the job and a progressive total the delivery address and instructions where necessary such as do not drive on neighbouring property or reverse down driveway. Upon arrival on site, if you're the first truck, you should identify yourself to the customer or his representative. Find out the requirements for the delivery of concrete, which should include access, truck positioning, is a spotter guiding you into position, unique aspects of the job and site, who is taking the dockets, that you have the right customer, concrete and delivery address. If it's a cash sale, confirm your company's details in regard to money collection policy. If allowable, where to wash chutes. Ensure that the concrete is at the workability or slump required for the customer to receive it. Communicate to dispatch any delays, changes, leftover concrete or balances required in a timely fashion. Where you wash your chutes at the end of a job is important. If permitted, wash out in a designated area where the wash water cannot enter a waterway or stormwater system including sumps or drains. Never wash down onto roadways, gutters or another person's property or any area where slurry might enter a waterway. Cement contaminated water is highly alkaline and can cause serious damage to the environment. If you find yourself in a situation where there is nowhere to wash your chutes on site, you may have to return to the plant to wash up. Remember to put your chute cover on to prevent any spillage from dirty chutes. Alternatively, you may be able to wash up into your 20-litre plastic waste bucket on the side of your truck and return to the appropriate disposal area back at the plant. Remember to lift the bucket using the correct method. Also, clean up any spillage no matter how small. Washing your chutes on site should not take more than five minutes. Check that your docket has been signed as per your company policy and any added water is recorded. Ensure your truck, chutes and where supplied chute covers are fitted and secure. As you can see, driving is the easy part and a model driver is someone who is a team player, plans ahead and has good vision, values and behaviour. The environment is important to all of us. In the ready-mix concrete industry, we need to take particular care. Concrete washings and the residue from concrete can contain a pH in excess of 12. At a pH of 12, it would take 100,000 litres of clean water to dilute one litre of contaminated water. It would increase tenfold if the pH were 13. Any concrete wash water has a very high alkaline level 
and a pH in excess of 12. At this level, the wash water is particularly harmful if it flows into any waterway or stream. Fish and vegetation will die. As a ready-mix concrete driver, we need to ensure that we take all the necessary precautions to avoid concrete spills of any type. Spilling concrete, or washing out in the wrong place, can result in heavy fines for the driver and the company. In addition, we all have a responsibility to care for and look after our environment. Ensure that your washdown is done either at the site designated washdown area or you should choose a gravel or grassed area. Do not wash where the washings could flow into an open or stormwater drain. Always keep your site wash to a minimum. This should take no longer than five minutes if done properly. If you find yourself in a situation where there is nowhere to wash your chutes, you can wash down into a 20 litre plastic bucket, which in turn can be brought back to the yard for correct disposal. Remember to place your chute cover on before returning to the plant. Chute covers are important and should be fitted at all times whilst travelling to and from sites. They can contain a small spill. Most large sites will have a designated washdown area. Ready-mix concrete plants will all have dedicated wash areas and collection ponds. You should familiarise yourself with these ponds and their workings. Ensure that company rules are followed when using these facilities. Leftover concrete is a regular occurrence in the construction industry. If you have concrete that is surplus to the site's requirement, you must call the dispatcher, advise them of the approximate quantity, and they will direct you. The concrete could either be recycled or could be used for other purposes such as manufacturing concrete mass blocks. Concrete is one of the most exciting building materials that have ever existed. It's the basis for almost all construction. It's strong, durable and versatile. Its uses include structural, decorative and functional form. In essence, concrete is made up of a paste, cement and water, which glues together a range of material, namely aggregates and sands. This is delivered in a fluid state in a concrete mixer truck until it is placed in form where it develops strength and goes hard. The more cement or the less water that goes into the mix has a bearing on the strength of concrete. This is measured in a compressive strength of MPA. The higher the MPA, the higher the strength. So concrete in a bridge will more than likely be three to four times the strength of that in a garden path. A range of admixtures are also used to enhance the properties or workability of concrete. These include air entrainer, which is primarily used to make the concrete more workable and move a little easier for the concrete placer. Water reduces. Concrete has more water than required to carry out its chemical reaction. By adding water reducer, this will minimize the amount of water that will bleed or exit the concrete prior to going hard. Retarder. This coats the cement particles and slows the setting process, giving concrete a longer life. This is useful where travel distances and time are increased from the batching plant or some reprieve is needed for places in the heat of summer. Rapid hardener is often used in colder climates, 
or where quicker setting concrete is preferred, such as in precast businesses. Superplasticizers are a high performance water reducer, which takes out a great deal of water and increases strength while still allowing the workability to place and finish the concrete. Additives, on the other hand, are added to the concrete for performance or enhancement. There are many types with just as many different functions such as colour for decorative and ornamental, steel and synthetic fibre for structural integrity and shrinkage minimisation, waterproofing admixture to fill the voids and prevent the migration of water, microsilicas for durability and densification of concrete. And while there are others, these are some of the more commonly used examples you may come into contact with during your time as a driver. In compliance with the New Zealand standards, concrete from a manufacturing plant must be tested on a regular basis to ensure that the concrete meets the requirements. It's important to know what is expected of you when a concrete technician wishes to take a test. There are two main types of sampling methods. A snatch sample is where the concrete tester will take the sample from one place. This can be from the flow of concrete, for example a chute or concrete pump, or from one particular point of placing. The other is a representative sample where three or more equal amounts of concrete are taken from different places or times during the discharge or placement of concrete. These are remixed by hand to form the representative sample. Should a representative test be taken at your manufacturing plant, the tester will ask you to remix the concrete between sampling to achieve the required range of concrete he needs for testing. Remember, you have valuable information the tester needs to record and complete his test. This includes the customer, the delivery address, the docket ID and or batch ID, the truck fleet number or ID, the concrete type, grade and code, the volume, this is to ensure that there is a clear audit trail to link the concrete batched to the load tested. An evaluation shall be done on mixes and truck mixes at 12 monthly intervals to evaluate their performance. When this occurs on your truck mixer, two snatch samples will be taken at the 1 6th and 5 6th point of a full batch as discharged. The common types of tests carried out at your local plant will include slump. The slump test provides a rapid method of determining the relative consistencies of successive batches of mixed concrete. This is done by the use of a slump cone where the tester places it on a flat surface, fills the cone in equal thirds by height and rodding 25 times uniformly at each third. Once the final prodding has taken place, the concrete is leveled off at the top of the cone and any spillage cleared from the base. The cone is then lifted vertically from the concrete, which should take approximately two seconds. The cone is placed down next to the slump concrete and a measurement is taken from the top of the cone down to the average height of the slumped concrete. This is the slump. Yield, density and air. This group of tests is to determine the density or weight of a fresh cubic metre of concrete, calculating the yield or the volume of the cubic metre and the air content within the concrete. Strength tests. This is where a number of concrete cylinders are made and allowed to harden in a controlled temperature environment until they are crushed to determine the strength of the concrete within the load. This is measured or calculated into MPA and allows us to monitor and follow up any change in a range of tests which may be attributed to ingredients and materials within a concrete mix. Beware of excess addition of water within your concrete mix. More water means loss of strength, increased slump 
and increased risk of shrinkage and cracking. Seek authorization to add water, as unauthorized water added to a concrete truck no longer complies with the New Zealand standard NZS3104. Where water is added, you must note it on the delivery docket as a record, as part of the plant audit trail. In summary, it's your responsibility to take care of the concrete from the time it leaves the concrete plant to the time it's received by the customer. Concrete is a special and vital part of our construction industry.